Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm really glad that you could be here. My name is Bill Fraser. I am the city manager of Montpelier. I'd like to welcome everyone to this virtual press conference. I surely wish we could hold it in person, maybe one of these days. So today I'm really excited that as per section 107, 1007A of the city charter, I'm appointing Brian Pete to the position of police chief. Uh, chief Pete, who is here with us, uh, has had a long uh, career in law enforcement in the military and most recently served as police chief in Alamogordo, New Mexico. His full resume and our formal written announcement were just sent out about 20 minutes ago being posted online. So all of you folks in the press should have received it. Uh, this is a big moment for our department. The last two chiefs spanning nearly 40 years were Montpelier locals and came up through the ranks. So we haven't had an outside chief in some time. Chief Pete will begin working alongside Chief Tony Fakus uh, beginning on June 15th and will assume his uh, formal role as Montpelier's 15th police chief uh, beginning on July 1st. Thanks in no small part to Chief Fakus, Montpelier has a great police department who are leaders in Vermont. Uh, we look forward to our new chief challenging our officers, dispatchers, and staff to reach even higher levels of professionalism and excellence. Chief Pete was selected from a field of 19 applicants. Our process consisted of re resume review, the now routine Google search, three interview sessions, extensive reference checks, criminal and financial records checks, and detailed background checks. I was assisted in this, making this decision by a citizen stakeholder group, the city leadership team, and police department representatives. Chief Pete quickly emerged as the consensus top choice. He impressed us all with his demeanor, knowledge, breadth of experience, leadership skills, and emphasis on mental health awareness and response. An internet search will tell you that Chief Pete left his position in Alamogordo through a difficult uh, resignation process. I personally dug very deeply into the details and came away even more convinced that Brian Pete was the right choice for Montpelier. The political and administrative environment created by Alamogordo city officials conflicted with his personal and professional ethics. Chief Pete's commitment to Alamogordo and its residents and the overwhelming support he still has from that community, his previous employees and other partners, partner agencies became clear during the extensive vetting process. I heard over and over again, even from his critics, how effective he had been and how much he'd improved the department. His integrity throughout the ordeal was inspiring. Despite the political climate in Alamogordo, Brian was still able to bring a crisis intervention team program to the department, winning a $400,000 grant to do so. He wrote Alamogordo's first strategic plan for the police department, championed officer mental health, and instituted a robust training program. Chief Pete worked extensively in the community, supported local businesses, and established new partnerships with county, state, and federal agencies. This is the type of forward-looking and active leadership we expect in Montpelier. We're delighted to welcome Brian Pete and his family to Montpelier. We are confident that his experience and dedication to progressive and innovative law enforcement will immensely benefit the police department and the Montpelier community. I'm proud to have him join our team. We'll have brief remarks from Chief Pete, Chief Fakus, and Mary Ann Watson, and then we will take questions from media representatives afterwards. Thank you. Chief Pete. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank you to thank the the, the various uh, stakeholders, department directives, and the hiring teams and committees for this once in a lifetime fantastic opportunity, um, and for their their faith and their trust. And I will not let you down. I'm looking forward to serving uh, the the citizens of the city of Montpelier, and and especially the men and women of the department and the city departments as well. I'm also planning to build upon the, the very, very strong foundation that Chief Vegas has uh, set for MPD uh, to include uh, the inclusion, accountability, transparency, and especially community-based service in 21st century policing. Nowhere uh, in, this, in this great country um, is there another department that's more dedicated to, to, to such 21st century policing practices and cultures. And, and finally, I'd like to um, tell the, the folks we're watching and uh, the families and the people of the city of Montpelier that um, I look forward to getting out there and to listening and learning and doing everything that I can to continue strengthening the Montpelier Police Department and uh, and moving it forward and of course I cannot uh, not mention the fact that uh, how grateful I am for the opportunity uh, to lead the men and women 
of the Montpelier Police Department. I'm looking forward to serving them and to working hard and advocating for them as well. And thank you all again for this extraordinary opportunity. Thank you, Chief. And Chief Fakus. Unmute yourself, sir. Thank you, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank members of our community, city department heads, and members of uh, the MPD who participated in the chief selection process. Uh, if chief Pete will come to the department faced with two incredibly difficult challenges uh, that, you know, be for any police agency. One, this, the whole global response to COVID-19 and all the changes that that brings. And currently we're at a time of national outrage over police brutality and the need to always foster and improve on police community relations. The good news is that MPD is fully staffed, uh, both in terms of our, the dispatch and the police. But again, our parking folks, uh, you know, that's still on, on hold as we work through the, the COVID-19 financial challenges. But crime is low, quality of life is very strong in Montpelier. Uh, and one of the things I really, I just love when I, when I when the few times that uh, Chief Pete and I have spoken on the phone is that it's, it's like we've been working together for quite some time, just in terms of how his uh, approach to drug harm reduction and community health, uh, especially uh, two, two, two key pieces that are, are very near and dear to both of our philosophies and policing. One is the, our commitment to 21st century policing and the six pillars uh, that are involved with that. And number two, our commitment to law, improving law enforcement response to people in, in mental health crisis. And that's something that we are both well accomplished in. And uh, so he's got some great ideas and, and uh, I, we so look forward to what he's gonna bring to Montpelier PD and, uh, and take it up a notch. And his, and his no question about his dedication and commitment to Montpelier is gonna be outstanding. And lastly, uh, just so people understand, because he's an out of state uh, police officer, He'll be going through a process, a waiver process, as when any, when any law enforcement officer is transitioning from one state to another. And that will be, so he'll have, uh, it'll be a little, so for probably hopefully within two months, it'll, uh, he'll be a fully certified Vermont law enforcement officer. It's a standard process that he'll have to go through with some additional training to bring him up to speed with Vermont rules of criminal procedure, Vermont law, Vermont criminal uh, motor vehicle law, and so forth. Um, so we'll the department will assist working with the Vermont Police Academy to have that happen as soon as possible. And again, uh, lastly, I just want to, for my 35 years here, uh, thank this community so much, um, and then also thank the department. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to live. It's a wonderful place to work. And um, so thank you. Thank you, Chief. Mayor Watson. Uh, thank you and hello everyone. Um, I want to start by thanking all of the um, folks who were involved in the hiring process. So thank you to the members of the public and uh, of the department and staff that were a part of um, this hiring process. Uh, it seems like we've come, come up with a great candidate, so or not just candidate, great hire. So thank you so much. Um, to Tony, um, I just want to say I've uh, been so grateful to work with you um, over the past few years. I have really appreciated your compassionate approach to policing, and I, I definitely see that um, in um, our incoming uh, Chief Pete as well, which is very exciting. Um, and to, to Chief, uh, our incoming Chief Pete, um, I just want to say that I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you, and uh, we have a, a great department here and a great community. And uh, we all highly value um, the work of our, our police department and, uh, and the, the work of um, the leadership there. So um, thank you and we're looking forward to having you. And uh, as I understand it, you're not quite in Montpelier yet, uh, but I wanna welcome you to Montpelier. So thank I you. I believe he's sitting in Montpelier right now, actually. Oh, are you? Oh, okay, Never mind then. <laughs> So yes, okay, well thank you everybody. At uh, this time, if there are questions from uh, media representatives, uh, any, of, any of the four of us that spoke, we'll be happy to take them. It would be excellent if you could raise your hand um, so that I can unmute you. Um, if you would like to raise a qu uh, question, um, you can do that by hitting your reactions at the bottom or um, you can hit more next to your name.
that also does not seem to be working. So what I will do, no one, unless no one has a question, but what I will do is unmute everyone. And um, if you speak up, I will notice and we'll sort of create a queue for questions. Okay. I'm not hearing from anybody. So I'm going to go through and sort of. It, uh, it looks Cameron, like we have a question. We're all muted. It says we're all muted, not unmuted. Okay. Well, it, okay. Cameron, this is Meredith. There is a question in the group chat. Oh, okay. Thank you, Meredith. You're welcome. Um, uh, from Eloise, Eloise Reed. Um, how will Montpelier take a stand against police brutality um, within the police department? Chief Pete, I believe that is directed to you. Hey, um, that, that's a very um, relevant question, especially with, with everything that's going on right now in our, our country, the unfortunate incidences. Um, Montpelier already has a very strongly established culture of um, of servant-based leadership, I believe, and service to its community. And what we have to do is make sure that we continue that culture so that it becomes the norm um, and not the exception that our department is one that believes in serving the community and being part of the community that it serves, that we do not uh, isolate ourselves and, and, and look upon ourselves as an us versus them uh, warrior geared uh, mentality we have to we have to be diligent and who we are we have to police ourselves we have to train and we have to make sure that we set the example for not only um, ourselves but to become the best doggone police department in this state and a national leader um, uh, in in 21st century policing practices and cultures and making sure and, and servant based um, response so I think that it's a there's a lot going on and we have and we can't do it alone we we need we need feedback and honest discussions with those that we serve in the community. And uh, I think that once we all uh, love each other and understand each other, things will just continue to get better. But um, I think we have a very strong department and, uh, and just moving forward and being that example. So Tom Brown had a question. Hi, excuse me. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Montpelier, uh, Chief Pete. Um, I had a qu just curious um, what drew you to Montpelier, uh, you know, Vermont in particular, and um, and also if at some point, if, and I, I know you're limited on this, but if you could speak on some of the philosophical or other um, issues you had with management in Alamogordo, that would be uh, uh, interesting to hear. So welcome. Um, what drew you here and what you've been doing since uh, you left the job? Okay. Um, well, first and foremost, what drew me here was um, knowing the reputation of the department um, and knowing the integrity of, uh, of the city government and of the professional staff and directors that are here and that they're geared towards uh, service to the community and serving the constituents. Um, that is huge for me more than anything else, especially dealing with some past instances. Uh, Chief Fakus has been a very strong voice and advocate within law enforcement executive circles regarding CIT, regarding um, external stakeholder buy-in and regarding working with, with all different various agencies. I mean, you can look at Project SafeCat just as one example. It's a national example and model um, with what they're doing. So to be able to come into a department that's strongly established and that, that, that understands, that gets it, um, and to, to do what I can to solicit uh, the ideas of the men and women of the department, that's extraordinarily exciting. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, and on a more personal level in coming here, is uh, my wife, Natalie, and I, we have a six-year-old daughter, Gabriella, and we were looking for a community. We were looking for, I think the best way to say it is a home. And Montpelier just checked it off on so many different levels. And 
and it was further validated when we came in here and from walking our dog to, you know, we're staying self quarantined, but as I have to walk the dog and, and when we're out trying to get groceries uh, and, and maintain that the social distancing, it feels like home. It's, it, it's the equivalent to me is when you're house hunting and you walk in to do that, you take that first step to the front door and you know this is it. And so uh, just everything combined, all those elements combined, just make it um, a dream, an absolute dream. And, um, and, and in regards to, uh, to my previous position in Alamogordo, uh, there are some extraordinarily fine people there, uh, some hardworking people that are working towards uh, the constituency, that are working towards, uh, towards the staff, and that want to make the community better. And, and it's a great, wonderful place to live. Unfortunately, there have been um, uh, some administrative things that have come up. Uh, and uh, some of them steeped in, in political uh, related issues that um, did not coalesce to who I was and to how I was brought up personally and professionally. I've come from a background of, of the inspector general's office. I come from a background of federal law enforcement and, uh, and I come from a background of military leadership where we have to value integrity, honor and service. And, um, and based on that, there were some issues there that, that did not quite coalesce to that. And um, there came a decision uh, in, in which I had to make, and uh, and I chose to uh, to pursue other opportunities, and, and again, uh, the blessing of coming here uh, had, had presented itself. So I'm grateful for that. All right. Um, if you have a question, either unmute yourself, or you can um, type that you have a question in the chat, and I can either read it out loud or call on you. Um, I'm sort of trusting everyone here to. Um, not talk over each other, but feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, Kim Cheney, Chief Pete, uh, I've been interested in regional police and fire cooperation in central Vermont. I wonder if you've had any experience in regional cooperation um, communications, uh, use of uh, equipment, training together, those kinds of things. Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, I do have uh, some experience and an exposure in working with um, uh, within in the city of Chicago. I became a licensed EMTB, um, and I did. Um, my practicum, if you will, my, my, my uh, hours, um, my CE hours with uh, the Chicago Fire Department responding to various different calls um, uh, for the, um, the ambulance uh, personnel. So I am, I'm extraordinarily familiar with, um, uh, with that aspect of working with the fire department. I've also worked with the fire department on scene in Chicago, worked with them in Alamogordo, as well as working with the chief of the Alamogordo Fire Department and, and trying to make sure we have joint training opportunities as well as when, when it comes to, um, unfortunately, um, active shooter scenarios and then how the, the police department can um, support the fire department in a way that, uh, that that will make their jobs easier when they're responding to, to emergencies. Um, so uh, it, I do have have that experience, but I think above more than all, uh, I have to make sure that um, my job is to listen, my job is to serve, and my job is to find out what it is that the, the fire department here in Montpelier needs from the police department that we can make all of our jobs easier to serve the citizens of the city. All right. Again, Emma, are you going to have a follow up? You're muted. I don't think so. Um, uh, okay, we'll see. Um, Tom, I guess I'm being told that you're also trying to speak again. So hold on, let me see if I can unmute you. You should be able to unmute yourselves. I did not cut off for anybody. So go for it, Tom. You got to unmute yourself, Tom. I was muted by the host. 
No, I was just curious about the citizen group. Uh, can we know the membership of that? Who was involved in this hiring other than departmental staff? Sure. Yeah, uh, I'll go through the whole thing just so people are aware. The, um, the, the Montpelier Police Department had uh, uh, Corporal Tris Chris Truhan was involved, Dispatcher Kerry McCool, Public Safety Administrator Chris Hepburn, Sergeant Eric Nordenson, and Supervisor Dispatch Supervisor Fred Cummings were involved. The city leadership team, I won't read them all off, but the department heads uh, and key staff uh, people, including Chief Fakus and Captain Neil Martell, and then the city, the, the citizen advisory group, which were people I asked to assist me, this wasn't a, a council appointed uh, committee, included uh, the chair of the Community Justice Center Board, June Bascom, Montpelier Alive uh, Director Dan Groberg, uh, a member, Social and Economic Justice Committee member, Julia Chaffetz, Times Argus Editor Steve Pappas, Washington County Mental Health Services Director Mary Moulton, and the Washington County State's Attorney R Rory Tebow. So that was my advisory group. All right, we did have another question from Eloise Reed. Um, she wanted to ask uh, Chief Pete would you support anti-racist training for the department? Yes, by all means. Um, but I'd have to look at the um, at, at what that that curriculum w would entail. There, there are many uh, there are many aspects to um, to this, and and, and I think that. Um, uh, based on the man I know Tony Fakus to be, to be based on the, the man that I know uh, Captain Neal to be, um, and in and, and the history of the department, I don't see any evidence uh, there. Um, but I think that it's important that we have to emphasize training that continues to challenge us, each of us, to confront any biases that we may have against anyone, whether it be skin, uh, tone, whether it be sexual orientation, whether it be uh, anything, name, name the gambit of anything that we sometimes unfortunately choose to distinguish ourselves from someone else. So I think that we need to be aware of any biases or implicit biases that, um, that we may develop throughout our lifetimes of experiences and to keep those in check and, and to constant struggle, not just for law enforcement, I think, but for all of us in general. And that's why I think uh, the national conversation that, that's going on right now is, is a very good one. And it, it, it one that, it's one that causes each of us to look inside of ourselves and to, to become better, to start with ourselves. And um, um, so I, I think that yes, and, and looking at that training and make sure that we maintain officer wellness to make sure that sometimes some of the, uh, some of the things that typically crop up within law enforcement, um, with those who work within law enforcement emergency response, uh, that we, we push those demons down, we push those, uh, those depressions down uh, and, and we move forward. So I think that the vigilance there is, is, is something I definitely support. I wanna make sure that, um, that we continue uh, to do this and that we become the national model for this for all other policing agencies. There are a lot of folks on this call for people to not have questions. So you are able to um, unmute yourself or you can um, type your question um, into the chat if you do not want to um, unmute yourself. Um, this is Kim Cheney. I have a follow-up. Um, am I on? You are. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, Chief Pete, I, I'm currently the chair of a regional public safety authority that's trying to work with Barry City and some of our surrounding towns. And my question about cooperation was not just between departments, but between municipalities. And I wonder if you have any experience in that area. Yes, sir. Um, I do have a lot of experience there. And starting off in my career in OSI, um, I had to liaison uh, with um, other federal agencies with that entire alphabet soup. 
um, federal agencies, state and municipal agencies, and that's something that's carried over uh, all the way to Alamogordo and something that I will continue to do here. Um, again, and following that legacy and that example set by Chief Vegas, that, that MPD enjoys a very strong and robust relationship with, with, um, all, ex with, with all law enforcement um, agencies. Um, so I wanna make sure I continue that, that I build upon that because law enforcement is, is, is not a vacuum. It cannot be a vacuum. We cannot do any of this alone. And, and, and it takes all of us to work forward. It takes all of us to, uh, to, to ensure the safety of community. So it can't be about ego. Never should be about ego. And that's, that's not who I'm about. It's just, it all boils down to making sure we do what's best and we communicate with each other to serve because that's what this job is about. Law enforcement is about service. It's not about anything else. It's not about power trips. It's not about us versus them. It's about serving people. And anyone who's in this job for any other reason, obviously with what's going on, time's over with for that. And we need to move forward and we need to make sure that we all coalesce with each other and we work well together. Chief Pete, this is Carol Plant. I um, am the Restorative Programs Coordinator for the Community Justice Center. And I'm interested just to hear you um, talk about your experience with restorative justice or your perspective about using restorative justice. Okay, um, I've worked on recidivism boards in the state of New Mexico and uh, working with community policing programs within um, Chicago. And then moving towards Alamogordo, we look towards restorative justice models. Um, there's a lot there. It, restorative justice takes a lot. It takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of, it takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of working with a lot of external agencies uh, to make sure uh, that we succeed and we accomplish. So I don't believe that any agency can arrest itself out of any particular situations. Um, it has to be about uh, a multi-pronged effort and going all the way from, from people, from SROs, from, from officers, from, um, from families, from school teachers, from everyone from the lowest, uh, from the youngest levels all the way up to adult levels and identifying people that need help and, and moving forward and getting them that help before they become immersed into a criminal justice system that, that needs a little bit of work. Um, so the, I think the best medicine here is to make sure we don't pull people in. And those who are in uh, is, is to do what we can um, to make sure that we that we move towards recidivism, that we move towards enhancing quality of life and opportunities, educational opportunities, uh, economic opportunities for people who are um, who have been disadvantaged historically. So I think it's it's a uh, uh, in looking at restorative justice, I think that it's a uh, it has to continue on as a national dialogue, and it has to be input from everybody. And and I think nowadays um, police departments are being forced to come to the table and to listen. Uh, where in the past that's been lacking in some areas. I do not see that anywhere here in the city. Um, but to begin those national dialogues and those local dialogues and sharing of information. And, and I, I think to me, the biggest key of restorative justice is, is compassion, is to understand again, that sense of service that what we're here for, um, um, there go I with the grace of God. So we have to realize that at any given one moment, any of us um, can be struck down from where we're at to the, to whether it's health, whether it's job, uh, <laughs> I've been there several times myself. So it, it's understanding and it's, it, it's establishing that connection to your fellow human being and doing everything that you can to give back, to help them, to help them succeed. Uh, I hope that answered your question. Yes. Thank you. Uh, if um, I may, Actually, Sorry, if I, 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 for a second, Mayor Watson needs to get off. I think she just wanted to say a couple things. Sorry to interrupt. Yep. Sorry. I just wanted to um, say again, um, welcome to Chief Pete. Uh, we're so excited to have you. You're clearly the right man for the job, and we're so we're so grateful for you. Um, and um, thank you all again. And uh, I've got a class here starting in about one minute, so I'll I'll see you all again soon. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> So I just wanted to respond, yes, thank you for answering that question. And um, uh, I love to hear you talk about service um, because coming from a restorative uh, 
process place. Uh, that's really what we think about is how we serve the people that we work with. Um, and I also appreciate hearing your, um, your thoughts about um, that it's multifaceted and that it's not you know, a panacea. We're not gonna fix it just by doing a restorative process, but we have to look at all of the different, um, all of the different contributing factors um, around what's happening with people. So thank you, I appreciate that. No, thank you. And if I may also follow up and transitioning from the previous question regarding that, um, why I chose to come here or why I wanted to come here. You guys are doing something that is seldomly seen in this country. You have a police department that engages and listens to the community under the leadership of Chief Agus, and you have a community that wants to rally to do better. It, it gives me goosebumps to be able to be part of that opportunity. And again, that's one of the many things that is so attractive about coming here to this city. And I'm so grateful and so blessed to have been here and to have been nominated or given this opportunity. This leads into my question, may I ask? May I talk? Um, hi, Chief, welcome. We wanna know how we can welcome you and how we can support the work, particularly with officer support with mental health services for officers when needed and support so that terrible accidents can be prevented. Um, the outgoing chief's article was very moving and made me really think hard about officer mental health, which is not something a warrior doesn't complain. A warrior is a warrior. A warrior does not let you know when a warrior is feeling weak, but a warrior needs support and rest and respite it from time to time. Um, what will you do to maintain your strength and equilibrium in the kinds of difficult days that we have now and I wondered if you'll have open visiting hours or some kind of community hour where we can speak with you in the way that the city hall council does sometimes hold community hour where we can meet a counselor and talk with them. Uh, yes, I can definitely uh, answer to that. And I think that uh, uh, Chief Fakus is also prob probably um, several things. He's probably chomping at the bit to say something about that because again, he is a leader in officer wellness. He was talking about and doing these types of things before it became a national discussion within circles like uh, PERF or the IACP. Um, so yes, um, warriors, yes. I prefer the term guardians um, because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be here to guard and to help and to serve and protect people. And yes, it, it, for too long, it has been a suck it up, rub some dirt on it and move on. Um, and that breeds more problems. And I think that um, in, in my philosophy is as uh, um, that we can't deal with, you can't not address and deal with a cumulative trauma um, or vicarious trauma. Everyone in first response, everyone who serves the public is taking on a lot of stress from everyone else. And I think the, the type of people that come into public service are the ones who want to help and who will drown themselves to give back to people. And then if it becomes too much, then the cynicism comes in and creeps in. And then that's when we start having issues. And, um, um, and, and we start making mistakes or we start making conscious decisions uh, to do things that we shouldn't be doing. And so it's incumbent upon each of us uh, to make sure we recognize that, to make sure we have the training to recognize that and our fellow public service folks and to, and to, to, to help them um, before it becomes uh, something that's gonna elevate to what we're seeing now, to what's going on in Minneapolis. And it's crucial, not just for the perspective of making sure that we keep our city safe and that we keep our city in a good name and that we become a national model, but I think even more in depth is because we want to save the lives of not the people that we serve, but the people who serve. So we wanna make sure that families stay together, that they have, um, they're not coming home angry, that that's crucial um, and, and coming from, from what I've been through um, and what my wife's strength, what, that's who I draw my strength from. And, and, and being able to recognize that in each other and to help each other before we steep a little bit further um, in, in, in that, that abyss. And I think Tony, uh, Chief Fakus probably may have some other things to say. Um, I'd like to jump in on this too, if I could, Ama. One of the things that um, we found when doing our background check on, on Chief Pete was over and over again, um, people talking about how connected to the community he was and how out and about and involved with very uh, many groups uh, and just being at events and being available and volunteering. Uh, it, it was 
it was a very consistent theme. It was something he talked about in his interviews, uh, and I think is one of one of the many things that attracted us to to want to hire him is 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 that uh, that important value. And, so I think and I'm sorry. To find him around. It, yes, sir. And I and I'm sorry about that. I should I I was getting my little head wrapped up into officer wellness <laughs> and, uh, and that. But uh, in answering that second part of the question, I will be out there everywhere. Um, you see me in the grocery store. You see me um, walking down Main Street or State Street. Please stop me and, and tell me what, what it is that you want to see from me. What is that I can do to make the community that I'm going to serve um, better? And, and yes, I will be... Uh, you know, and looking at what the restrictions are from COVID-19 are going to be, but I plan on being proactive uh, and getting out there and talking to individuals, uh, making myself available. I'll be here, and if only one person shows up, then one person shows up, and we have a very good conversation. Um, but whether it's um, faith-based organizations or uh, social service organizations, any any place, anybody that wants to talk to me, um, I will be there on your time. Thank you, Chief. You know we would have a potluck for you or a big barbecue if it wasn't like this right now. We can't even say goodbye to Chief Fakus properly. Need to have a party. It'll just be delayed. That's right. Keep them around longer. All right, no one else has typed in a question in the chat for a minute. Um, you know, feel free to unmute yourself if you do have a question. But if not, there'll be plenty of, of opportunity. As, as we mentioned, Chief, will, Chief Pete will uh, begin working along with Chief Fakus on the 15th of June. That is to allow him his two weeks of quarantine after moving to town. Otherwise, I think he'd be there working today. Um, so uh, we will have I'm sure he will make himself available for plenty of conversations. And I'd like to thank everyone for coming, asking questions, participating. And again, uh, we're just uh, delighted to have Chief Pete coming aboard. I think we really have a great find. And, uh, you know, there will be another time for this, but I really can't thank Tony enough. Uh, he's been just a great partner to work with and great chief. And uh, we've managed to actually get along personally, too. So that's. There's that, so uh, I'm going to, oh, Diane? No, oh, no, she just hopped in and hopped out, okay. So, this is yeah. Diane Derby. I just want to uh, welcome Chief Pete. I am a Montpelier resident, long time, and I am also Senator Leahy's point person with the law enforcement community in Vermont. And on behalf of the Senator, I'm sure he'll be in touch when he hears this news, but welcome. Uh, to Vermont, to Montpelier, and I've had a real privilege of working with Chief Fakus for many years. It's been a great relationship, and we will miss Tony greatly, but uh, we're really thrilled to have you, so thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity and the trust. Thank you. Well, I guess it's time to call this one. Um, thanks again for everyone, and um, I believe Chief Pete in Chicago might pop in on us at the council meeting tonight too. So uh, for those council, I, I would for for Chief Pete's sake, we do have Council Member Jack McCullough is here. Just wave your hand, Jack. Uh, Dan Richardson is here. Uh, Jay Erickson just popped his face up. <laughs> Warren Hurl. Uh, Mayor Watson was on the call as Connoron. No. no. So most of the city council's here, so they're, they're interested. And uh, we have a, they're a great bunch. They work very cooperatively with our staff. We're fortunate to have them. So, so. Okay, thanks all. On, Thank to, on to great things for the community. Thank you.